what is the force on this loop of wire? So here we have a long straight wire carrying electrical current and then another loop of wire that has electrical current. So this one's five amps and that's four milliamps. And then the dimension, this is three centimeters away from the bottom and then it has a, a length of five by 10. And so the question is what's the net force on it? I'll be honest, these are not simple problems because you, you really have to kind of um, picture things in three dimensions and it's not so easy. So we're gonna try, okay? Uh, to do this and let's start by thinking about the magnetic field due to this long wire. So if I have a long wire right that, like this and I'm going to draw it right here. Here's my wire and let's say the current's coming out of the paper so I draw a circle and a dot. That means uh, so I have a current coming out of the paper. It makes circular field pattern of magnetic field. Uh, if I want to find the direction that I can take my thumb and put in the direction of the current and of my right hand, this is my right hand, okay, my thumb in the direction of the current uh, and my fingers rotate around in the direction of the magnetic field. So if I draw that like here, it'd be like this. I'm just gonna draw four of them. And then as I go further away, it's actually lower. I'll draw more. So I'm drawing shorter arrows, right? So, but that's what the pattern of the field looks like around that. I can actually calculate the magnitude of that if I know the distance away uh, as a value of r, then I can use this. The magnitude of the magnetic field is mu naught over two pi, where mu naught is a constant, multiplied by the current in the this wire, divided by two pi r. So this is this tells me the strength of the magnetic field due to this wire. Now I want to find the value of the force on the different wires right here. So I need a different equation for that. This is the value, the expression for the force on a wire. So this is a cross product. So it's the force is the current in this wire times its length across the magnetic field due to the other wire. So I can write the magnitude of this like this. F equals I delta L B sine theta. That gives me the the, the magnitude and then the direction I can use the right hand rule. Okay, so that, I mean, maybe you've seen this kind of thing before. That's the right hand rule. So it's I L cross B and that's the force. I actually made, I made this Lego version of this and we'll use this today. Uh, it's not quite the best. I can make a better one, but that's that. Okay, so now if I put my loop over here, you can see that uh, if I draw that, Here's, let's see, so if I'm looking at it from this way, and the current, this would actually be current going into the board, current coming out of the board. So there are different radiuses, so they're gonna have different direction forces. So let's uh, draw the magnetic field here on this paper. So here I have I is that way. If I put my thumb in the direction of the, of the current, then my fingers show the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case, it's coming out of the paper on that side, and it'd be going in on this side. So that's important. So this is my B. Down here it'd be N, but I don't care about that. So let's take this into pieces, right? Let's call this piece one, two, three, four. And let's find F1. First of all, let's find the direction. So if I is in this current is that way, and B is that way, then F would be that way. Wait, that's not right. I, no, I cross, I'm sorry. I is that way, B is up, right? So then the force would be up. So if I put it this way, I have F, B, and I. So I want B to be out of the page. I want I to be this way. And so my force would be up. So this force is gonna be in the positive y direction. Let's just write that as uh, I delta L1, which is 10 centimeters, uh, times B1. B1 is gonna be equal to the, uh, I'm gonna have R1 right there. So let's, I really need two magnetic fields, B1 and B2. So B1 is mu naught I1, over two pi times R1, which is three centimeters. So 0 0.03 meters. 
B2 is going to be mu naught times I1 over 2 pi times I2, B, R2, which is going to be 8 centimeters, right? Because this is 8 centimeters away. So 0 0.08 meters. So this is going to be B1. The angle between the magnetic field and the current is 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is 1. So this is going to be in the y direction that way. What about wire 2? In this case, the magnetic field, so let's draw it like this, F1. For wire 2, um, it's tough, right? Because here the magnetic field is not constant. The magnetic field and here and there are different. It decreases as you move away. But let's just find the direction. So the direction for this one, taking this, I'm going to say here is my, I put it as QV, but that's I. And then B is out of the paper like that. So the force would be to the left. Great. That's the direction of the force. Now let me go over here. The only thing different is the direction of the current. So I'm going to switch this around. And you see this. So these two wires have magnetic forces on them in opposite directions. And so no matter what they are, they do vary in, in magnitude over the whole course. So you'd actually have to do a, an integral to find that. We don't need to because they both are the same and in opposite directions. So the force on this wire and the force on that wire cancel. Okay, what about the force on the top wire? Uh, F3, so now the current is going uh, that way. So QV is that way. B is out of the page, and uh, that's gonna be down. So I need to calculate F2. It's gonna be I delta L3 B3 minus. So now we can put it all together. Um, so F equals F1 F net. F1 minus F or plus F2, but F2 is negative. Um, oh gosh, I guess we gotta, let's do this in Python. Don't you think that'd be better in Python? I could do all this calculation uh, without that, but I'd rather not. So let's just switch over to Python. Um, it makes a really great calculator in this particular case. So Python, here we are. Yay, Python. Okay, so let's just start entering the stuff that we have. I'm going to say mu zero is four times, uh, I'm going to say pi times four times 10 to the negative seventh. That's four pi times 10 to the negative seventh. Uh, now I need I1. I said that was five amps. I2 was 4 milliamps, so 4 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, now I need L1 is going to be equal to 10 centimeters, so 0 0.1 meters. Uh, L3 is the same thing, 0 0.01. I need R1, which was 0 0.03 meters. It was 3 centimeters away. R2 was 8 centimeters, 0 0.08. Okay, so now I, I don't really, I can go ahead and do this. F1 equals, I'm just, I'm just typing what I said. It's actually, I, I need B1 first. B1 equals mu naught times I1 divided by two times pi times R1. See, I don't even need to calculate that. I can just write, I'm really just writing out the expression just like I would normally see it. That's why Python's so awesome. B2 equals mu naught. You do have to be careful about case and, and how you type things. You have to look the same times I1 divided by two times pi times R2. Now I can get F1 equals I1, I2 times L1 times B1. F2 equals negative I2 times L2, L3, I know. That's actually F3. F2 was canceled, okay. I wrote that wrong over there. I2 is the current in that whole loop. They all have the same. Times B2, which I should have called that B3, but yeah. Okay, so now F net equals F1 plus F3. Print F net equals F net Newtons. Let's see if this works. There's your answer. And so what I really like about this is you can change the dimensions and stuff and it still works. Uh, let's say uh, loop, force, calc, magnetic field. I'll save it. And I will give you the code. 
it saves it takes time okay there you go so there there you go that's the solution to that problem not too bad but i mean again you really have to practice kind of this visualization of three dimensions it can seem overwhelming that problem can but it's really not that hard if you just practice